let us try to now discuss the complete response for an RLC circuit. So if we turn on the AC, we basically get a noise in the background. If we turn it off, we get the we get very small time for the video to be recorded. So I've turned it off right now. Um, so uh, this is a complete response for a RLC circuit. Does not um, uh, it's not necessary whether the circuit is uh, parallel or in series. So this is a general uh, solution for example. So we are going to employ our knowledge uh, for RL circuit and RC circuit that we studied in detail and try to see what steps are there for us to be able to solve uh, an RLC circuit. Uh, whether it's a natural response circuit or a uh, response with uh, sources in it. So and this is a general solution. So whenever you encounter a circuit, uh, you always need to first come up with the initial conditions. Find all the initial conditions. It's not very difficult. With practice, you can basically find them. Remember that a capacitor acts as an open circuit in steady state. An inductor acts as a short circuit in steady state. Remember, a capacitor does not suddenly change its voltage. So a voltage across a capacitor at T is equal to zero minus and uh, at zero plus would be the same value. And remember, the current uh, through a, an inductor does not suddenly change. So current through the inductor just before switching and just after switching would be the same. That is what is mostly needed in finding the initial conditions. Then the, the second step is if the if there is a force response or uh, even if there is uh, not a force response, then find a expression expression or value for forced response. So for example, you are trying to find an expression for voltage and uh, there is a uh, voltage source present or a current source present in the circuit. Then the voltage ultimately, say voltage across a capacitor uh, will ultimately be uh, some value, some constant value. So let us say the force response of the circuit would be something like uh, constant voltage. So we find an expression for the force response. When the circuit is in steady state, what will this voltage be? And in finding this final response or the ultimate steady state value, may also need all that knowledge that I have discussed in finding the initial conditions. So the third step is write an expression, appropriate expression for natural response for the circuit for the case with the necessary number of uh, arbitrary constants like A1, A2, S1, S2, necessary number should be there. So uh, for finding uh, the expression for natural response, we must know that the circuit is over damped or critically damped or under damped or undamped or whatever. So if for example, it's over damped as an example, the natural response type output would be of this form if the circuit is over damped. And how do we know that the circuit is over damped? We find the alpha and omega zero and see that alpha must be greater than omega zero. Then we are going to write the expression in this form. Now the necessary number of constants are A1, S1, A2, S2. And we can ultimately solve for these. Now the overall complete response would be the sum of both these responses. So 
So the overall response is the sum of force response and natural response. This is the complete response. So if we are trying to find some voltage, then that voltage would be the force response part plus the natural response part. So we may get something like the final value, say the final value of voltage plus A1 e raised power s1 t plus a2 e raised power s2 t. Yes, uh, a circuit with uh, the sources in it will also have an alpha that will be computed much in the same way. If it is a parallel RLC circuit, the alpha would be equal to 1 over 2 RC. And if it's a series RLC circuit, then the alpha would be equal to L over 2 R, uh, or sorry, uh, R over 2 L. So in the last case is, when we have an expression, then the last thing is we need to evaluate this expression, evaluate this expression at t is equal to zero, and then also evaluate the derivative of this expression at t is equal to zero. So what does this mean? We need to find the expression for v at zero, and what does this mean? We need to find the expression for dv by dt at zero. And we will get two equations, one here, one here. And we can solve those two equations to find a1 and a2. And once this is known, because this is a constant, we would have found it here. So every everything would be known. Obviously, this process can be ultimately understood by taking an example. So let me let me take an example from the book. The book draws this very simple and interesting circuit and employs that unit step function here for UT ampere is this current source, a three Henry inductor, we have a resistor, we have a capacitor, again an unusual value of the capacitance, maybe to simplify calculation, and we have a source here as well, a current source of 5 ampere. Now, you see there is no UT here, but a UT here. So before T is equal to 0, there was no current flowing here. This was 0, so this was not in the picture but it was there, this source was there at that time as well. So this source is there from minus infinity and remains there, remains there till positive infinity, but this source was not there for all the negative time and it came into action at t is equal to zero. So for this case, let us try to see what we need to do, uh, how to find the initial condition. So remember our interest develops at t is equal to zero. So by using this circuit, by employing this circuit, we assume that uh, we know we know that the circuit uh, for this DC sources case is at steady state at this point. The circuit is in steady state at t is equal to zero minus. And at this time interval, what would be happening here? We will have, we, we will not have this here, okay? We will not have this here, so it is not here. We will have an inductor actually, in steady state, the inductor opens, uh, sorry, shorts, an inductor shorts. So we have a short circuit here. Nothing happens to the resistor. A capacitor opens up. For this instant, remember this is a discussion for this instant. And this source has always been there. It will remain there. The capacitor has opened up. We are usually interested in finding the voltage across the capacitor. We are usually interested in finding the current through the inductor. I have taken my own uh, polarity values and the direction of the current. The book may not may have something different, but it does not matter. We should be able to understand the basic uh, concept. 
polarities and directions should be taken care of when finding the polarities and uh, values uh, values of voltages and currents so what do you think would be the voltage here remember this would be vc 0 minus and what would be this current il at 0 minus so from this it's very easily seen that il at 0 minus would be equal to minus 5 ampere and this will be the same current that would be flowing after t is equal to 0 because of the inductor property that it does not allow a sudden change in the current and what would be this voltage so we know this current flows here it will create the voltage across this resistor according to passive sign convention in this polarity and what would this voltage be 5 into 30 or 150 volts so in this open it's not a closed loop but we can apply kbl in uh, open uh, configurations as well so we can write minus 150 plus vc that gives us vc 0 minus to be equal to 150 volts and this will be the voltage even after t is equal to 0 so you see we have worked out the initial conditions now for the same circuit if we need to find the final value the expression for the force response ultimately what will flow uh, in the circuit at t infinity so when this source comes in this is already there the circuit again gets to a steady state now we have a 4 ampere source here inductor has shorted out and we are trying to find il at infinity there is this resistor 30 ohm resistor and we are trying to find the voltage vc at infinity and we have this 5 ampere source here so this current will again create a voltage of 150 volts across this uh, resistor and all this current is going to flow in here downward and this current also would flow here this current must flow here and not go here because this is an easier path why it chooses this difficult path so i l at infinity would be 4 plus 5 both flowing downward 9 ampere in fact the negative of this thing because of the direction i have taken the upward direction both are flowing downward so we are going to have minus 9 ampere so you see at t is equal to 0 things started for the inductor for, at, uh, for minus 5 ampere with minus 5 ampere current and ultimately settled down to minus 9 ampere so the settling value is not 0 in, as in the case of uh, the natural response circuits and what will be um, this vc it stays there so vc at infinity remains 150 volt so when the circuit started we had 150 volts across the capacitor when it finally settled down it had 150 volt there as well does not mean that uh, it will remain 150 volt throughout remember the cases of uh, natural response circuits they started with zero ended with zero but they, in between they went up they came down so this will happen with the capacitor as well so in this particular case the capacitor is going to ultimately get the same voltage so if we if we, if we are interested in in the response that is basically vc we may based on the type of the circuit uh, the nature of the circuit whether it is an over damped case critically damped under damped case we we are going to have something of similar sort but if we are interested in uh, the current of the inductor as a response then we see the current is going to start from a value of minus 4 and is going to get to minus 9 and it, it, it may so this is the final value this is a starting value it may go like this it may go like this 
it may go like this so there is overshoot there is ringing and then settles down this is probably not the case why because there are two energy storing elements so they are going to exchange energy this is not an rl case or rc case that it does not go beyond the settling value when the circuit has only one energy storing element it cannot overshoot that that value however it's not very clear this may be the case so anyway so you see uh, depending upon what you take as the response or the output you can get different kind of uh, waveforms and it uh, makes perfect sense